the two former speakers were um, talking about how to do payments uh, within an existing infrastructure of payments, uh, namely the four base system, which is uh, set up by Visa and MasterCard. <clears throat> A few years back, when we started looking at mobile payments, we noticed that merchants, especially physical store merchants, were not adopting mobile payments. And the reason we figured out very, very quickly is that they couldn't find a business case to do so. Because every mobile payment system out there were sitting on the, uh, what we call the card rails. So what people tried to do with mobile payments was essentially transmitting card data through the mobile. So for a physical store merchant, they don't care. They don't care if you stand there and pull your card out or if, if you wave around mobile. They won't sell more just because you're waving around your mobile. So what we said is that, hang on a minute, what is the global fee outtake in this market, the four base system? And we looked around and McKinsey actually had come up with a figure and they said that the global fee outtake per year in payments were 600 billion euro. Then we started getting a little bit excited because that's a lot of money. And we said, what if we can not be part of that infrastructure, but what if we can change that infrastructure? What if we can do a payment in a store that doesn't transact over the card network, but rather we initialize the payment through the interbank settlement system? And the interbank settlement system exists everywhere. That's how banks transact with each other. If we do that, the raw material cost for a payment for us is virtually zero. So then suddenly we can give the merchant a business case, i.e. accept this mobile payment and you'll make money. Today what we are offering merchants is half. It's a very sophisticated pricing model that we thought about a lot. That was a joke, by the way. We could also offer a tenth or a twentieth, but it doesn't matter because half is good enough. And suddenly, when we did that, we started seeing merchant adoption of our system. Now, in Sweden, which is the country we launched in first, uh, we now have 4,000 stores, which represents about 20, 22% of Swedish consumer turnover. And I often say it's half time, and we lead against any competitor with 4,000 to zero. And the match is not over yet, but it looks pretty good so far. Now, the second thing, so we have a business case for the merchants. They accept a secure payment, which is the name of our product. The other problem is, OK, if the merchant have to invest in machinery at the point of sale, then they will not do it. Because even though we offer a business case, uh, they don't know how many people are going to use this service. So as soon as they need to do CapEx, they can't do that investment calculus, so to say. So we said the rollout has to be for free. And that was uh, pretty hard not to crack. Another not to crack, we said that is a must have of mobile payments, is when you, any proxy of cash, like check or card, you as a consumer identify yourself to the merchant. It's always been the case. You write a check, you show your driver's license. When you pull that card, you're actually transmitting data about your accounts and your personal data through that terminal. 
If you're going to do that with the mobile, you have a problem. It's an absolutely humongous problem, and that is that the mobile is a mobile. It communicates via the air, either through a Bluetooth signal, an NFC signal, or a mobile, the mobile network signal. And we said, if you're going to push data it, through those channels, it's going to be hacked. So, and today, of course, we're proven right. They're all hacked. It doesn't matter what encryption you have. Uh, then what the US government will do with your car data, I don't know. But anyway, the, so we said, how do we solve this problem? And we solved that problem, the two hard problems, with a very high-tech piece of machinery, namely a sticker. And we said, what if we print a sticker that is unique for each point of sale? So it doesn't just say this thing. Doesn't you say McDonald's on King's Road? It says McDonald's on King's Road and cashier six. Then we can use another piece of existing hardware, namely the mobile, and we can scan that. So we said, if we do that, then we know two things. We know where you're at and, you, and your, your mobile fingerprint. We send that to our switch. And then the cashier integration that we have through our switch will send the sum and the, uh, the cashier identification. Then we achieve a match. So that was the way to that. Those three issues were why uh, Seamless succeeded finally in getting merchant adoption for mobile payments. Uh, so today we have announced. Uh, I mean, first of all, Sweden, we have 4,000 stores, about a quarter of a million people that is actively using it. Uh, the merchants pay half the card fees that they normally paid. Uh, we have announced seven countries. Uh, and just about half an hour ago, uh, the CEO of McDonald's in Belgium and the CEO of Bpost Bank in Belgium announced that they're going to roll out secure in Belgium as well. Our model is very scalable, and what we are, I think, as a, as a first company in the uh, mobile payment space, we are in production. We're not doing pilots anymore. We've been in production for a year, and we are now in a land grab phase. So for us, it's all about rolling out in, 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 uh, globally, essentially. So that's what... Uh, that's what we're doing. Now, that's really it. I don't have anything more to say other than soon you'll pay with Secure, I think. Thank you.